Hello, welcome to Yarn Lane. My name's John Scott. We are the only shopping channel in the UK totally and utterly dedicated to everything yarn, whether it be knitting or whether it be crochet. Uh, we've got two beautiful patterns for you today, I can't tell you. Right, before we go to see Anna, let's have a look at the website. You go to the website, www.yarnlane.com. Nearly said Sewing Street there. Click on Watch the Live Show. And then you'll see there's a little box to the right hand side there where you can send in a message. Uh, or you can also send me a message on Facebook Live. But however, if you scroll down, oh hang on, what's a Bezzy, Bezu, Bezu Tiffle? They are beautiful cushion covers, I can't tell you, right? <laughs> I just can't spell it. Okay, so everything's on pre-order. When we introduce it, it will go into a different column which says show deal. So we've got crochet hooks. Right, there is the Piccadilly cushion. Beautiful, isn't it? And the pom-poms, and then we've also got the, uh, uh, no, it's called the Hampstead, Hampstead. Now, from that bundle, you can make both those cushions. From one bundle, you can make both cushions. We will introduce them as we go through. Everything else that you need is there, your your pom-pom um, maker, your zip, or anything like that, they're all there. But also, uh, the crochet hook. If there are other things you want, you can just go to the website, look at the top there, you've got new in yarn kits needles patterns i'm going the other way to you but anyway they're all there you can go onto the website and see anything that you want from there okay so i've got anna nikki provit here with me she's always great very good nikki provit very good thank you la, la mucha we call her la, la mucha, mucha. Yes. Uh, who is a crochet expert extraordinaire. Um, um, we've got books by her, we've had so many, she's in, and you, and you absolutely love it when she's on. Let me go through what we've got for you today, and then we can get on with the demonstration. So I'm going to start with Hampstead, first of all. Right, okay, so you get four balls of yarn here. Now, I need to tell you that you can make both cushions out of this. Both of those cushions can be made out of this kit. So look at this. It's already selling on pre-order. You get 200 grams of jewel spun Aran from the West Yorkshire British mm -hmm. Design Expertise. It is, uh, sand, I couldn't look for the colour, sandstone, it's 100% acrylic. Oh, it feels lovely. Feels beautiful, this one. So you get that ball and then you get three of these, which are the Saltaire Aran, 50 grams. And this one here is 55% acrylic, 25% nylon, 20% alpaca. So you get three of those. And Anna loves them. She's holding one of the I cushions. I love them, yes. Look. You can make <laughs> both of those from this kit. You've got the instructions that has both of them. And you get all the yarn. £24.99. Is that what? That's £13 a cushion. Third. I know the colours in there are just exquisite. Stunning, we'll look, we'll the yarn is amazing. In a minute at the um, at the cushion themselves, but isn't that just stunning? So you get that, 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 and the instructions for twenty four ninety nine. Oh, it's not even thirteen pounds. Is that twelve pounds fifty a cushion? Twelve pounds fifty a cushion. Absolute bargain. It is a bargain. It is a bargain. They're going. They're selling. They're selling. They're selling. Right. Then we've got the other cushion. If you don't want that one which is called the Piccadilly. And this one here is you get the ball of the big yarn, the jewel spun. Now these colours are beautiful, aren't they? The golden what? Felt star, felt spa, golden felt spa, this one. Then you get two balls of squirrel. And that makes that one. That's beautiful, isn't it? Now they're all crocheted. What's on the other side? Is it the same on the other side? Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah, they're crocheted in a round. Ah. So you've got, yeah. Let's see. Convenient. Convenient, convenient. convenient. Now what's, how much does that get? 19 99 What a brilliant. Now, is this yarn easy to work with? Very easy to work with. It's, it is a little bit fuzzy. It's got some hair in it, but yeah. that's nice. You know, it's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's very easy. It doesn't split. It's lovely. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Susan says, good afternoon, you both. Looking forward to the show. Angela hello, says, Susan. hello. Claire says, hello. Oh, lots of you there today. Right. <laughs> Let's do a couple of tools and then we'll get on with some crocheting. Right. The hook first, the five millimetre hook. Do you use five for both? Five for five both, for yes. Both. You might already have one of these. That's why we don't put them in the kit. Zing crochet hook there, two ninety nine. These are fantastic. The colours are gl glorious. Beautiful colours, the Zing ones, aren't they? Then we've got two pom pom makers, 
We have got this one, which makes you a 45. Mm, yeah, there's two. One's a 35 millimeter, one's a 45 millimeter pom pom. For the cushion, you use the 45. You need the 45 yeah. for the cushion. That's this one here. Pom pom maker. All the instructions are in there how to use it. Five ninety nine, five pounds and ninety nine pence. And then the other one has got little ones on, extra small. Oh, that would be cute. You can put them all around. That's yeah. really cute, actually. Yeah, good. Are you not going to be demoing that tiny one for me today? No, she just gave me such a look then. No. <laughs> you get three quarters of an inch and one inch in here. They look completely different sizes, but they're very easy to use. Yeah. So, and then I've got a zip. Yes, you can put a zip in it. You don't have to, it's optional, but yeah. you can put a zip in your cushions. Okay, perfect. It's just, it's, it's, it's nice for ease of washing. Yes. You know, you can kind of wash it. At, I you just know, love the colours. I can't get over I how know, beautiful right? the colours are. The colours are stunning. It's the jewel spun. Yeah. The so this is uh, one ninety nine for your zip. One pound ninety nine for your zip there. So now you, th that's quite interesting. So once you've made these, you can wash. You can wash these arms. Well, of course you can wash them. Yeah, they oh, are. Of course you can, John. Oh, so of course, stupid. John. Come on now, John. <laughs> Of course you can wash it. Um, I would always use, it's acrylic, but I would always use a wool wash anyway. Yes. Purely because you want the gentleness of it all. You don't want them to be tumbled too roughly. So I will always use the wool cycle on your machine. machine. But yes, if you insert a zip, I have sewn in my zip. I always do it by hand because that's easy. It's yeah. the most convenient. I always use invisible zip because my sewing is... You know, it leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> so I always use an invisible zip, a uh, uh, thread. Threads. And then, yeah, just insert the zip on your uh, on your finished edge. So when you finish your cushion, you've got this the, the, the last round of your cushion. So this is where you will insert your zip. Always insert it in the middle so you have a bit left on each side so you can just kind of like work your edging or your joining with your hook around it. I don't right. know if you can see it, but you've yeah. got the little little bit here with your double crochet. Then you go over this edge as well, just to give you a nicer finish. But I, I always find zips in cushions very useful because of, of course you want to wash your yeah, cushion. Yeah, you just don't want to. Yeah. I mean, if you don't want to insert a zip, that's absolutely fine. All you can do is sew up both ends of your cushion. And but, but before you finish, make sure you leave yourself a space and fill it with toy stuffing. Right. So fill it with mm. toy stuffing as much as you want. And you can still wash it. But just all of it, all, all in one you know, in a washing yeah, machine. Exactly. So yeah, so it's okay. So which up to you. one are we going to start with today? Then? Shall we start? Because I've got few demonstrations okay. on those two beauties. On the, okay, let's do that then. So this is the Hampstead one, where you can make both. You yes. can make both of them. The reason also they are called Hampstead is because it's from Hampstead Heath. Okay. Because Hampstead Heath is one of the best places in London where you can see a sunset. Oh, is it? Yes. It's on, on the top of the Hampstead Heath. It's yeah. an amazing sunset. And of course, because of the yarn, I was doing the cushion. I'm thinking like, my God, the yarn, it looks like a sunset. And it's called, I think it's called uh, sans, sand, uh, sandstone, it's called sandstone Sunset. sunset. And I'm thinking like, it's got to be Hampstead Heath. Yeah. Look at it. It's Hampstead Heath. Oh. I know, right? Yeah. I know. And this one is called Piccadilly because it's colours of Piccadilly. I mean, look at this. It looks like a Piccadilly cushion. If you go to the centre of Piccadilly, you know, on the fountain where the where the yeah, 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 was yeah. planted, it's Pica the colours of Piccadilly. Beautiful. Oh. And it's woven. Like, you know, it, look, it, has, it has this woven effect. Yes. Like, you know. I know. I go overboard. I know. Oh. No, no, I know. it's good. It's good. It's good. It's but good. yes, so let's look at this cushion first. So... This is worked in tapestry crochet. Now, tapestry crochet is amazing because it allows you to work with two colors and it gives you this beautiful effect. And I wanted to create kind of like you go from the smallest diamond to the, uh, from the largest diamond to smallest in the middle and back to large. Uh -huh. So it creates this kind of beautiful gradient effect. And the size also, it's very useful because I always use this kind of size. On my back, you know, when I'm sitting and crocheting all the time, if you uh, sit a lot yeah, and crochet sure, sure. a lot, it's very good for the small of your back, actually. So it's a perfect size cushion. But yes, let's talk about crochet. Yes. So tapestry crochet, beautiful technique. It's worked 
into the back loop of every single stitch purely because if we if we don't a pattern will sway to one side so you will not be going lovely and straight it will start swaying okay and uh, yes and a pattern will not be nice and straight so we always work it into the back loop of every single stitch traditional I mean, you, the rule of tapestry crochet, usual rule of tapestry crochet, it is worked uh, with the additional collar cal carried in between your stitches. However, I never do this. All I always do, I carry it at the back of my work and then I strand it. So this is what I want to show you. It just, it creates a lot neater effect because if you were to carry the additional yarn in your stitch, it will show through and I really don't like it. Okay. Yeah, it just, it shows through really horribly and it doesn't look nice. And if you're creating things that uh, like this cushion in the round, then it's perfectly easy to carry the additional yarn at the back of your work and strand it when you need it. Making sure you don't leave your loops too large, otherwise, you know, there will be, be a lag, be catching all the time yeah. and pulling your work. But let me show you how to do the tapestry crochet. Perfect. So in your pattern, the, the pattern itself, you've got a bit written and a bit charted, but most of it is charted. So your cushion, both cushions follow a chart. They are simple charts, easily memorable. They're not difficult, especially this one. This one is super, super simple. It's super sim sim simple one, so don't worry. It's not hard to follow. Just make sure you have like a washi tape or post-it notes to mark your rows as you work them. Okay. Just, ju just, just for ease. So you've got the chart, you also have like making up instruction, and you also have full tutorial here on how to work tapestry crochet. So I have not abandoned you, it's like, just go, go <laughs> off and do it. You've got a full tutorial here. I also have a video which I will post actually on the Yarn Lane face Facebook group. Right. So you can like, like, like watch it later, just so you remember the, the technique. Brilliant. So I've made a little swatch here. Let me position myself correctly first so yeah. you can see me beautifully. Now, when, you, when you're working in tapestry crochet, you must remember the most important thing, I know it's, it's thingy, to keep your yarn separate, purely because if you don't, you will get really annoyed, your, yarn will, your yarns will tangle, you will get really annoyed, and then you get frustrated and you will just throw it Give somewhere it, yes. yeah. and never finish it. So make sure you keep one collar to your right and one collar to your left. The one, the collar that is usually stranded, the one that is not used as much per row, I will keep to my left. And the collar that I will use the most per row, I will keep, keep to my right, and I'll tell you why. Do you keep it on the big ball? Like, would you, if you were making things, would you start with yeah. the big ball? You don't yeah. wind any off? No, 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 no. This is what I have left off from, from, oh, okay, from okay. making those, right. yeah. So this is why the tiny little, tiny yeah. little babies. But yes, yeah, so, okay, so we are working into back loop of every single stitch. So I pick up my main collar for this row. See, so if you look at your stitch, your stitch has a V, you know, your stitch forms a beautiful V on top. So we've got a front leg here and we, and we got a back leg here. So we will always work into the back leg of every single stitch. So we insert a hook into the stitch and finish off a double crochet as normal. And again, this is UK ter terminology. Okay, and now right. let's say I wanna strand my collar behind. So I wanna carry it with me, but I don't want it to have a huge loop. So what I will do, I will insert my hook into my next stitch, place my contrast collar on top of my hook, like so, mm -hmm. and then go yarn around the hook and finish off my stitch enclosing that additional strand here. Right. So it's enclosed in the stitch, but behind my work. See, so mm -hmm. now, the most important thing in, in tapestry crochet is, is the changing of collar. So when you, you always change your collar on, your, on, on the last stage of your stitch, on the last stage of the stitch before you need it. So for me, my contrast collar, my, my white collar has to come on this stitch, which means I have to change color of my yarn on, on this stitch now. Right. So the way we do it, we go into back loop, 
grab by Ann and pull it through. Drop by Ann, you see I'm dropping it to my right so it doesn't tangle, it doesn't cross over or tangle. Pick up my contrast and I am on my last stage of my double crochet and I will finish off this double crochet with my new collar. Right. See, so now it's ready for my next stage. So my next stitch is in my white, so I'm gonna pull it in, like into the back loop. And again, because my following colors are in my collar A, I need to swap again. So I stop at the last stitch of my double crochet. So when I have two loops on my hook, I will drop my back, my, my, my collar B, let's call it collar B. Uh -huh. To my left, I will pick up my collar A from my right and I will finish off this stitch. You see? So mm -hmm. that way, you have a nice collar change and your work is not swaying. So let me show you this again. So let's say I need to work now to this stitch. So this is where my new stitch is coming. So this is where my collar, collar change is coming. So I need to carry on with my collar A all the way, stranding my collar B. So I'm going to go, I, you usually strand your yarn every third stitch. Okay, every don't third go every stitch. stitch is, no, it's, it's, it's too much. It's too, it's too much of a hassle. Every yeah. third stitch is fine. So let's say we're going to work two. And now we're going to strand our additional collar on this stitch. So again, insert it into the back loop of your stitch. Place your collar B on top of your hook. And now grab your yarn and pull it through your stitch as normal, you see? And as I'm doing this, the collar B stays on top. It doesn't come through with me at all. Mm -hmm. It stays where it's supposed to be. Now I will finish off my stitch. And now I have to work one more stitch. And I have to change my collar to my, from my collar A to my collar B on this stitch here. So I stop when I have two loops on my hoop. So is, this is the last stage of your double crochet. Mm -hmm. Drop your collar A to your right, pick up your collar B from your left. You see, none of them are crossing over. They are not twisting, and this is very important because once your work starts, your yarn starts twisting, you will get fr frustrated. Mm -hmm. So now finish off this stitch with your brand new collar. And now my next stitch, just one stitch, is collar B. And the following stitches are in collar A. So again, I stop on the last stage of my double crochet, pick up my new collar, and work all the way. Now, what I really want to show you as well, how you can make your life a lot easier. It requires a, a bit of work, but trust me, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. What I want to show you is how to work your collar work in two-handed method. In what, sorry? In two-handed method. So okay. working it with two hands is beautiful. Right. Again, it requires a bit of practice, but trust me, it's worth it. So when we crochet, again, I will post the vid video on our yarn lane, like, fa like Facebook group of the video as well. So in yeah. case you, 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 need, you need a refresher, right. When we usually crochet, not everyone does, but usually, we kind of just have our yarn in our left hand and we scoop it up, yes? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can crochet the knitter's way. So if you're a knitter and you throw your yarn over your needle, you can crochet in the same way. Right. So then you will hold your hook and your yarn in your right hand. So when you will work your stitch, you will go in your stitch, yarn around the hook, pull it through. So you see, your hand is constantly like lifting. You can either hold it like so, like you would do a knee, 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 knitting needle, depending how you're holding, yeah. like this or like this. So if you were neat at this, this is a gray way, gray way of, of learning to crochet. You see, so when we're doing collar work, we can do it in two-handed method by holding each yarn in each hand, you see? So when we work in a stitch, let's say we wanna work our stitch, let's do A. So we're gonna work A from our right hand. Mm -hmm. And now we wanna switch to collar B. So we're going to work collar B from our left hand. Oh. So we see, we're gonna work collar B here. Now we wanna switch back to collar A. We 
do this. You can get super quick at it and it's super, super efficient. Yeah. Again, we call a B, so we pick it up from our left hand. And now we want to finish it with collar A from our right hand. And when we need to strand our, our yarn, let me finish this one, so I'm going to strand it on the next one. So let's say I want to strand my collar B. I simply insert my hook into the stitch, place it, place the strand on top of my hook, and finish off my stitch as normal. Mm -hmm. See, so it becomes really efficient. It's very similar to when you work in Feral, the 200 method. Yeah. It is super similar and it's, you can get really efficient. It's very, very quick. So again, requires a bit of practice. It requires to kind of rewind your brain a little bit yeah. to kind of do it in two hands. But trust me, it is really worth it. Also, very important, every so often, make sure you give your work a bit of a stretch when you're doing a collar color work. The reason is because you don't want those strands at the back to pucker up. So you oh, want to stretch yes. them out a little yeah. bit. So every, every so often, on the round, just give them a bit of a stretch. Okay, so now you're, you're, you've done a tiny bit there. You, when you're doing the cushion, you have a lot more stitches. Oh, yeah, there. of course, yeah. yeah. So basically, on a cushion, when you're doing the cushion, you you will, this is your, you see, you can see a beautiful edge here. Uh -huh, I don't I know, know if you can see it up close. Let's have a look. There we go. You there can you see go. a lovely edge. And this is your guide. This is, this is your, your kind of side edge. I love an edge. I know that some people do it seamlessly, but I love an edge. Mm -hmm. It gives me, you know, it keeps you on, on track. Uh -huh. Yeah, I do. It's kind of like, you know, it's always your guide. I love an edge. Um, so, yeah, so you will cast on this big loop. So let me show you, actually. I can quickly show you. Let me just cut this off now. Okay, I need to tell you that half the stock of this one's gone already. Of the Hampstead. Yeah. I'm glad you're loving the Hampstead. I love the Hampstead. Yeah. Ooh. Well, it's lovely. It's you can get cushion. two patterns and you can get two out of the amount of yarn you get in the bundle as the well. useful sizes. I don't know why I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah, but the useful sizes, they're kind of perfect sizes. You know, sometimes you love a big cushion, but sometimes you like a yeah. nice, small, dinky yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I think they are perfect sizes. Thank you for loving it. I'm, glad, I'm glad you are. Got a message from Lorraine for you as well. Uh, Hello, it says, Lorraine. Hi, John Nana. I love watching Anna. Such a lovely lady. And the oh. instructions are also so clear and easy to follow from, follow from Lorraine in Fulham. Oh, thank you, Lorraine. You're oh. so nice. Thank you. Oh, by the way, do you remember on the last um, show we were, we were talking about the bro broken wood, wood, wood mountain mysteries? Yes, 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 yes. I had so many messages from you and everyone is loving it. Oh, wow. So I have a feeling that we will need to open, actually, a yarn lane like... Like broken wood as as so association yeah, or like something. Yeah, like fan club. Or yeah, I think we should. So, okay, Kat's so got much no fun. idea what we're talking about. So just explain what it is. So on the last show, we were talking about the broken wood like mystery. It's a TV show we from New off Zealand. By saying there was an actor in it that you really Mike Shepherd. <laughs> right. Mike Shepherd. So we Shepherd. talked about Mike Shepherd, the actor. And I said yes. I don't know him. She went, Oh, you've never heard of and what are they called the broken, broken wood mysteries. Yeah. Very good. It's a detective se like series. On, I think it's on drama. Yeah, yeah, it's on. I just, just you can watch it on. Try it, doing it, talking into your telly thing. It'll yeah. come up. Yeah. Yes, and it's from New Zealand, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's brilliant, and everyone is loving it. So thank you so much for all your messages. I, I want them. Please just send them all to me. They're I'm just, loving it. They've just started after the after we um, had done that show. Lots of people messaged me saying they've just started replaying. All yes. of them again on this cho whichever yes, channel so it's on. Perfect so time you, to get hooked. It's perfect to catch up and get hooked on it. Yeah, exactly. But I do definitely think that we should have like you know a young lane. Oh, okay. Appreciation then. like like society. I'll get word with Rebecca Reed. <laughs> right. Um, so what are you going to show? Oh yes. Yeah, sorry. 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 No. Um, no, no. Don't apologize. I'm going to show you how to start. So you start by uh, by making chains basically. Right. So you will make as many chains as you need to make. Uh huh. So let's say I'm going to make twenty. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Way more than half 16, of these kits have gone now. Way more than half of them. So you make twenty chains. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad. I'm glad you're loving the cushions. Right. So you will make twenty chains. So now you have to join those chains to form a big loop. Right. So what you do? Make sure it is not twisted, so they're nicely showing. Bring them close together. You see, again, make sure that none of your edges twisted. Uh -huh. Make sure they nicely hug in. And then insert your hook into the very first chain you made. Grab your yarn. 
oopsie daisy, and slip stitch. So this is your loop. So now you have joined your loop and this is your foundation row. Right. So you will make, you will follow the color, the, the color, the color chart, but I'm just going to do whatever color chart here. Yeah, yeah. But let's say I'm going to chain one on always. Make sure I, I do, do my first stitch into the very first chain. And let's say I'm going to work three. Again, I don't know what the chart, I, I don't remember. Yeah, the yeah, chart, don't take you know. this as gospel of what the chart is. Yes, follow no, the chart. Yeah. So you, let's say you make three, let's say I make four. So I stop now because my next color is color B. So I grab, oh, well, let me cut it off first. Yeah, I grab my color B, I swap. Give yourself a little bit twist here so, so you hold it down nicely. You can also enclose this tail so you don't have to weave it in afterwards. It's very useful. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna work one stitch. Let's say I'm gonna work two stitches in color B. See, I'm enclosing my tail. And now I wanna change again. So I continue to work in into my chains all the time for my first row, round even. Mm -hmm. So we are working in a round. Let's say I'm gonna do this one. And change again. So this is super simple. Again, you see, I'm always making sure that I'm dropping my yarns in the correct order so they do not twist. I know I keep on going on about it all the time. I do it on Zoom classes as well. I keep on going on about the yarn order, the yarn order. But trust me, you will love me. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's so, you know, it's so much better than having oh, and twisting all your yarns all the time. It's good to get into a good, good habit. Yeah. There you go. You see? So this is your foundation. Obviously, it's not the exact foundation, room, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you've got any questions for Anna, please get them in now, yes, whether you email please. the studio or send them on Facebook. We've got some messages for you to read out now. Oh. Here we go. So, oh, Anna, once again, your bad influence has made me spend money. <laughs> I love these cushions. Oh, Brenda. thank you. Oh, that's really kind. Thank you. That's the first one. Then I've got another one. Laurie says, love watching Anna. Always so enthusiastic and fun. Love the cushion. She makes me smile. Oh, I'm oh, so it's happy. Oh, it's Laurie in Suffolk, right? They're love hearts. They're not question marks. They're, when, she, when you oh, send yeah, it yeah, through, yeah, they yeah. come out as love hearts. Oh. Um, and we've got a question now. question from... Go on. Uh, Amandi. Hi, John Nana. I would love to make the cushion, but I've never crocheted. Any recommendations on how to learn love from Mandy? Uh, okay, crochet isn't hard at all. Crochet is very, very easy. It's people have this perception of crochet to be hard. It's all about practice and persistence. Um, you've got this huge amount of books out there. If you're not a visual person, if you cannot learn from looking at pictures, then there's huge amount of YouTube lag videos that will teach you the basic. The most important thing is to find your comfortable way of holding the yarn and a hook. So the most standard way, the most, you know, again, everyone, the way you crochet is your choice. There's no such thing as right or wrong way of holding your yarn or hook. Whichever way you find the easiest is the perfect way. So the most common way of holding the yarn, I'm just gonna do a slip knot. Holding the yarn and your hook is holding the yarn in your right hand so, sorry, so your yarn is held in your right hand, your hook is held in the left hand. Oh. No, hang on, you've got that wrong way Sorry. Start again. I don't know my, my <laughs> hands. <laughs> uh, so, my yarn is held in my left hand, my hook is held in my right hand, yes. and those two do not mix. So, this is responsible for my yarn, this is responsible for my hook. So, when I usually crochet, I hold my tension with my two fingers here. So, I will place the yarn on my palm. I will close my two fingers here just to hold the tension. You can wind it around your pinky once if it's easier for you. Mm -hmm. Hold it down. Then I insert my index finger underneath this thread of yarn here, the strand of yarn here. And then with my index, no, with my middle. Yeah. And my thumb, I hold on to the tail of my work. You need to hold on to your tail, otherwise your work will spin and you won't be able to crochet. Right. So holding on to the tail is very, very important. And then, so you see, my right hand holds my hook, and I go yarn around the hook from, from my side out. So yarn around the hook, give it a nice, good wind. And then as I'm going through my loop, my hook faces downwards. And then I scoop that strand up and 
push it through my loop on my hook, you see? And this is why it's vital to hold your tension here. So let's do another one. Yarn around the hook, face downwards, and pass through the loop. The reason a hook faces downwards is because it's easier for it to pass through our loop. Because if we were on the side, it would be very difficult. You see, yeah. it grabs it. So you need to face it downwards because it slides a lot smoother through. You see, and now what we're going to do, we're going to move our middle and our index finger and, and our thumb up our work. So we're constantly moving it up oh, our work. Oh, so you're always holding the bit that's coming yes. up. You have to keep holding the tail. You just work your way up. Absolutely, because yeah. this is what's holding our work open. It, hold, it holds it steady and it doesn't twirl around our hook. Mm -hmm. So now say, you see, also you pull on it and it opens up the chain on your hook. Right. See, so it makes it a lot more easier. So you see, it's, it's not a difficult process, but it requires a little bit of work. So it's not something you're going to pick up immediately. I mean, you might, you might be a superstar. There are some people, there is actually a, la a lady on the Yarn Lane like Facebook, uh, fa Facebook group who finished my folk tales like, bl la like blanket and she only learned to crochet in January. Oh, wow. And it's extraordinary. So do you know what? You might be like, this is yeah. me. This so is now, for me. Uh, have you got somewhere where we can go and watch your videos of you doing? Yeah, this? on my YouTube channel, and you can watch, watch, watch. And what's watch your my... YouTube channel called? It's Muchka. Everything is Muchka. M double O M O O C H K A. I'm gonna have to think about it. Yes, I was gonna say. But if you get the pattern, it's on the back of there anyway. Yes, but... yes, yes. You've got all my details here, so you can just yeah. Yeah, M O O C H K A. She's right. Right, there's there only the 15. We know how many we start with. There's only 15 of these left now. Oh, I'm there's glad you love the country. There's only 15 of those left. Oh. Right, now, should we talk about the other cushion Yes, now Piccadilly, well? the colours of Piccadilly. Okay, so the next one is Piccadilly. This one, you can make one cushion out of the bundle, but... But it's a, it's a splendour. And you'll have lots left over to play with other things. Yes, you can actually make a little cushion. A little okay, baby one. make a little cushion. To go make with. a little cushion for your cat. Not that they Which they one appreciate is easiest it. for dinner, that one or that one? That one. Okay, so if you're a beginner, Piccadilly, Piccadilly maybe. Piccadilly is easier. Piccadilly is easier. I love Piccadilly, I'll tell you why. Okay, first of all, I love the yarn. Actually, it's the yarn that actually inspired both of the cushions. Right. It's the colours. I mean, look at the colours. Yeah. It's just this gentle striping is stunning. This one, I wanted to have more of a denser and woven effect. Yeah. Because I kind of, I love how when where, when people weave and the weave that creates, you know, by the fabric which is created by weaving, I wanted to achieve that. Right. And I think it's just stunning. It's a stunner. I love it. I know. Uh, uh, I know it's my cushion, but you know, yeah, I love it anyway. So, yeah. But you know, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's a super simple stitch, but it's so effective. I mean, look at this. It's gorgeous. It looks like it's a what I know, I know. I keep on going on about no, it. No, 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 no. It's lovely. It's so I, When I started to, because I was playing around with stitches and stuff like that and I came across this and I'm thinking like well I, I can't no, not do this it looks it literally looks like it's woven and it's very dense so it's perfect for, for oh like, actually for I cushions. guess I just noticed because you've got colours going across but the stripes of the pink yeah going like like it's the yeah. warp and the weft of a fabric yes. isn't it yes I know okay mm. I'm in love with this one, actually. Um, <laughs> we this never one, have guessed. I know, right? <laughs> um, this one is created by Spike Double Crochet. So Spike Double Crochet, it's a normal double crochet, but it's placed a little bit lower than normal. So it's right. placed on a row below. So again, if you were a beginner, this is a nice start. So again, each row in this cushion is worked with different Right. You carry them both with, with, with you all the way along. You don't cut them or anything like that. You just ca la la carry them with you all the way. And again, it's made in one big loop as the, begin as, 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 as the other one uh -huh. and just joined on the side here. So you slip stitch on the side and chain one to move forward. Now, I have done, so it's worked in alternative of double crochet and spike double crochet. Right. Let me just untangle this. And again, your yarns are placed, you work one yarn per row, so you don't have to worry about tangling oh, okay, or anything. okay, that's good. So one collar per, per row. Yeah. So now let's say, you see, on the other side, if you could see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but you can see the longer like, sti like, sti like stitches here. You see, you've got the longer stitch and you've got a short stitch. Mm -hmm. Long stitch, short stitch. So on this row now, we're covering 
the, the, the short stitch and working just a simple double, double crochet into the long stitch. So that way it creates this kind of stripes. Oh. So you see on this one, so because I have a long stitch here, I have, I have a spike double crochet here, I will work a standard double crochet here. So I will just work a standard double crochet. And now because I have a, on this one here, because I have a short stitch, so on the last row I did a double crochet, this one I'm gonna do a spike double crochet. So what it is, is you insert your hook into this, so not into the top of the stitch, but into the stitch below, so, so round below. Right. So you go underneath that stitch here, so into you basically go into the top of this stitch here. Uh -huh. So you go insert your hook here, Grab your yarn and pull it through. Make sure you pull it up to the height of your row. Yeah. And then finish it off as normal. You see? So that yeah. creates a nice elongated stitch. Uh-huh. So now, this stitch here, you see, it's a long stitch. So on the last row, we did a spike double crochet. And now what we're going to do, we're going to work a normal double crochet into the top of this stitch. Right. So into just standard double crochet into the top of the stitch. The second one, you see, we've got a short one. So we have to place a long one here to cover the stitch. So basically what, what we're doing, we are enclosing this stitch with our new yarn, with our pink, pink yarn. So insert your hook underneath that stitch into the top, top leg of that stitch. Well, it's kind of most, almost two rows below if you were to be like really like technical. So insert your hook, pull up the yarn, pull it up to the height of your round, and finish it off. You see, it's very simple, it's super easy to do, and you can do it, you know, while, you, while you're watching your favorite TV yeah. and everything. What I want to do, I want to get to the end, because I want to show you, because you change your color at the end of your round. Right. See, you're constantly doing it, so you're working a normal double crochet, and a spike double crochet. Make sure that the spike double crochet comes over, so it basically encloses the shorter the normal double cro double crochet from row below. Let me just get to the end of the round because I really want to show you something. So oh, when, this one's popular as well. It's really lovely. Oh, thank you so much, luck, luck for loving it. It's such a fab. I know, I know. Okay, I, I know. I keep on going on about yeah, it. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's but good. you know what? It's kind of as I said. I was playing with stitches, and I and I love a spike stitch. I do love a spike stitch. And I was doing this. I said, "Oh, I said, oh my god, this looks amazing." And I think the yarn, the the jewel spun makes it. Yes. Because it creates this kind of gentle. Mm stripes behind it and, I, and I'm slightly obsessed with this yarn yes. actually. And also it's not, slightly. it's not regular so it just changes, yes. it kind of like sound waves, yes. it's like that isn't it? Exactly, because you know in some self-striping yarn you, you, you get really sharp edges, yeah. you get really sharp color change, but this one just, it's, it's Seda has have outdone themselves on this one, yeah. I have to say, well done Seda. Uh, now Susan says, which one best for an intermediate person? Intermediate, I will go for the Hampstead. The Hampstead. The if you're intermediate, you will find it lovely. And you can practice your two-color work. You can practice holding your, your yarns. So it's always th there's always some, something to learn. Yeah. Brilliant. So, yeah, if you are intermediate, you want a bit of a challenge. It's, okay, not much of a challenge, but what I mean, it's to learn how to hold it two-handed method, to learn, you know, follow a chart and stuff like that, if you never did. So I would say the Hampstead, yeah. yeah. But also, if you're an intermediate, if you love the other one, you can go for the other one as well, just because oh, you love of course, it. You know, absolutely. Don't, don't think, oh, I'm intermediate, I have to do the Hampstead. No, either, no, 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 no. With, uh, In other words, as an intermediate, you can do either, but the Hampstead's going to teach you new yes. tricks, whereas yes. uh, Piccadilly, yes. you might find that yeah. you can just do it by sitting For the Hampstead, if you have never done tapestry crochet, then Hampstead is perfect. The also thing you have to understand, they are not big projects, so you don't have much of a way of getting bored quickly, yeah. if, if you know what I mean. They are quick projects, they are quick to do. When you're watching your favourite TV, you're your br your broken wood lack <laughs> mystery. You can just whip just whip it up in no time. Okay, so we're gonna are we gonna try and change colour now? Yes. So we are now at the end of our round, and now what we have to do is we have to join our round by slip stitch. But when we slip stitch, we will also change our colour. So what it will basically do: insert your hook into the very first stitch, drop your yarn pick up your new collar and just finish off the slip stitch with the brand new collar. Right. 
and that's it. Oh. I know. But this is the neatest way of doing this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And brilliant. again, it gives you a nice edge. I love an edge. Yeah, so you said. It gives you a nice edge. Also, with this one, what will happen as you... I'm going to show you the pattern. Because I've, 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 I've took pictures. <laughs> I took pictures. <laughs> so, you know. I've also given you instruction on how, on how to insert a zip if you want to zip. Okay, brilliant. So, you also have a picture. Yeah. And again, on how to work, work this stitch as well. So oh, again, hang on, it's gone out of focus. Wait a minute. Oh, there you sorry. go, there you go. There we go. So again, you've got pictures here, so don't worry, everything is there. Um, here, there's a little picture here of my cushion. When you finish your cushion, what will happen? Your, those lovely pink stripes, you see the lovely pink stripe going, they will kind of start going a bit drunk. So they will kind of start going like, oh, oh no, we have too many jeans. There we go. <laughs> so what we have to do when you finish it, you need to blo block it into order. Oh, so, okay. so that's why the edge, the edge here, is fantastic because you use this edge as a guide. So you place it nicely and, and, and straight, the edge on your towel, your favorite towel. Mm -hmm. Spray it first with some water to dampen it a little bit. Place the edge, pin the edge in place so it's nice and straight. And then you manipulate the other ones so all the stripes are nice, are nice and straight. It's not difficult at all, so don't uh -huh. worry. It's absolutely fine. It just kind of, as I said, if you want your stripe to go straight, if you don't want your stripe to go straight, then it's absolutely Doesn't fine. Matter. Just do it like that. Yeah. What do you have underneath your towel? What are you pinning it to? I usually put it on the sofa or spare bed. Oh, okay. So you place a towel on a spare bed. Yeah. You know, and then you just kind of pin it in place. Oh, okay. Yeah. Simple oh, as that. on the sofa. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There's nothing. You you can buy yourself like blocking mats and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, like we, that, we have some of those. But you, yeah, 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 yeah. You can use that. I, I, if you don't want one, then you can. Well, then if you can first just do time and you think, I might never do it again. Absolutely, yeah, don't, of course. Don't splash out on a blocking mat in case you think, oh, crochet's not for me or knitting's not for me. Yeah. But if you, you can do it on bed or on the sofa, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's not difficult. So as I said, you just need to kind of make it a bit sober and make it yeah. swing the other way. But again, you don't have to. You might want it. You might li li like the effect. But if you don't, you've got full instructions in your pattern. Uh -huh. So don't worry. I'm also at the end of an email. So if you want any questions, yeah, if you have all, any questions. all of your contact yep. information is on the back of the yeah, pattern as well. Yeah, at the back here. So if you need anything, just yeah. give me a shout. Yeah, exactly. And yes. Or shout out on the Facebook page, because you're on Facebook as well. Yeah, you can just catch, just, just catch me up over there as well, absolutely. Okay, now talk to me about these pom-poms, because have you used, the, <gasps> have you used the, the yarn from the kit to yes. make the pom-poms? So I used the dual, the dual span for, for Hampstead, for, for the rectangular cushion, I used the dual span. For the square one, I used the... the, the yeah. What is it Cream, called? what are we calling this one? This one is called stoat. Stoat? I know. A little stoat like animal. Like little stoat animal. It's like my favourite animal, stoat. Oh, is it? Yes. Stoat. Yeah, that one was squirrel. I knew that one was squirrel. Yeah. I didn't know this one was stoat. Yeah, so for this one, I used the. Uh, um, I, I wish I'd have taken my pom pom maker so I could actually show you how to make the pom pom. Oh, okay. How many minutes have we got? And did, Do is we have your enough? pom pom maker the same as this? Yeah. It's, a, it's exactly the same. We I'm can gently. Put it on the spot now and give it to. Can you all right? You yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's. I'm just. Just gonna... rip it. Just rip it open. No, 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 no. The five ninety nine. You can make. Oh, I haven't got one, but you can make a. Uh, I think it was inch and a half. And... Uh, it's it. This one is three point five centimeters and four point five okay, centimeters. Perfect. These are brilliant for the cushion. Oh, there we go. I use the four point five. Right. And they are. They are. They are magic, 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 magic. Yeah, because you look. I, when we made pom poms when we were little, we got two oh. donuts of cardboard. Yeah, cardboard, and you wind and it, wind yeah, it, wind it, 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 and then cut around it. Yes. Now, they have they have flippers. I call them flippers. They're okay. probably not called flippers. Technical term. Flippers. Technical term. A flipper. So you do one half. So you do them in two halves. So one half. Do your take your two flippers, open them up, grab your yarn. Grab your yarn, wind it, you see, on the little groove of your flipper. Right. So wind it until nice and full, nice and evenly around. Oh, these are brilliant. Uh, uh. They make pom pom make, they take pom pom making it to another like, level, honestly. I going mean, of course. Round and round, you're going round and round. Just round oh, yeah, and going round. From end to end as well. Yes, yeah. yes. So evenly. So make sure it's nice and even. So you don't want one, one part too bulky, the other one yeah. too. To, oh, uh, well, not bald. Bald, yeah, yeah, that's the one, sorry. What's saying, Kat? 
Oh, you're not being precise. So you're just winding it around back. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Do this until you until the little oh, roof. It's yeah. full. It's full. You see, okay, it's now full. Yeah, yeah. So cut off your yarn. Now, close your flipper. Close it up. Turn it around. Open the empty one. So open the fancy flipper. Right. And do exactly the same thing. Do exactly uh, Kat's the same. saying you could go to a different coloured yarn if you want to do this bit and have a oh, absolutely. bi-coloured pom-pom. Do you know what? There are so many books on different on how on how, how to make interesting like pom-poms. You can make animals with pom-poms. Oh, I know. That's with fantastic. All the th I, know. I know. I've seen them. There is one, but I think she's a Japanese lady. I yeah. don't remember her name. Oh, my God. This is an art in itself. The animals she makes are extraordinary. But also, when I was little, it would take you forever to make a pom-pom because yeah. you were winding it through, yeah. winding it around everything. Whereas this... You're literally going to, One, I'm two, thinking, three. oh, are we going to have time to do it? But actually we are, just don't have time to do yeah. this. This has changed the pom-pom game completely. <laughs> prim, is it prim or clover? Clover. clover. That one's clover. Clover has changed the way of pom-poms. Right, so again, you do this again until it's full. Cut it off. Close your little flipper. Cut off those loose ends because they're going to be, in, they are annoying. I don't like loose ends. Okay. Right, Cut and now, yeah. what you're going to do, I don't know if you can see it, which, which, uh, I'm going to be like this. Yeah, can yeah, you see you, me we'll find you, don't worry. There is a little groove. So this is where your flipper opens. On yeah. the other side, you've got a little groove here and you've got a little groove here. Yeah. So what you're going to do, you're going to grab your scissors. Oh, you're going to cut it cut now? Cut it, yes. So cut it, following this groove all the way around. See? So make sure, obviously, you are onto the other side of your flipper, so your flipper is not on the open side. Yeah. Cut it all the way around. There we go. And now we're going to grab a separate strand of yarn. All right. They've just realised how you're doing it now. Just hear them in the gallery go, oh! Insert, <laughs> insert this strand of yarn into the groove. Yeah. Pull it tight. Make sure you give yourself a nice knot. Pull it nice. Oh, hold on. There's a little strand that is grabbing me here. Make sure that you have no little strands grabbing. There we go. Yeah. Pull it nice and tight. I usually do. Then go around again. Yeah. And go onto the other side. Just to kind of double security, if you know what I mean. And then knot. And now hold this down because this, this end, you're going to use to sew your pom-pom to, oh, okay. to your item. So don't cut this off. This is yeah. important. Now you, what you're going to do, you're going to open up your flippers. There we <gasps> go. There we go. And then grab your two halves of your of your pom-pom maker and just separate them. There we go. And now what you have to do is trim your pom-pom really well because obviously it has a bit fluffy, but look how easy it is. Yeah. All you do is just trim it around, trim it around so all those little bits, are everything is nice and even because you want your pom-pom to be beautiful and fluffy and plumptious. You don't want it to be kind of saggy and a bit blur. And Kat's worried that you've taken the pom-pom maker to pieces. Does it fit, click together? <laughs> uh, don't worry, Kat, it's still alive. <laughs> You just put it back in, close your flippers, and it's back to normal. How brilliant is that? And then you use that long yeah. piece of yarn coming out of your yes. pom-pom to stitch it onto your cushion After cover. you, also a good trick, I'm going to tell you a good, good trick. If you're making, that only works if you're making pom-poms in, in pure wool or natural like fa like fabrics. When you make a pom-pom, put it in a colander, Put it over a boiling pot of water. Put this colander, put all those pom-poms in your colander. Put it over a boiling pot of water so the steam comes in and penetrates all the fibers. Fi yeah. They will fluff up to no end because wool fluffs up if it's, if it's steamed. Oh, so that's on a natural or a wool? On natural. Wool it has one. to be all natural yeah. like, like fibers. But they, they just go vroom. How so, yes. so yes, but yeah, if you trim it nicely, you've got a little pom-pom. Oh. I know, I love a pom-pom. Uh, Anna, love a pom -pom? that was absolutely fantastic. When you, you're never in long enough because it's gone too quickly. Oh, sorry. When are you in next? I'm not sure, actually. Oh, you don't know? Okay, fine. I'm at no, some fine. point. I think in August. I, I'm once a month. I'm a well, once a month once kind a of month girl. Once a month kind of girl. Kind exactly. of girl, yeah. Right, let me do recaps quickly before we have to go. So, uh, starting with uh, Hampstead. 
which is this one. So you get a ball of them. Oh, look. Right, there's only nine left. There's only nine left and lots in basket. So if you've got it in your basket, you need to check out. You can make both cushion covers with it. Uh, we've got them there. And it's, oh, you can, oh, they're still there. There we are, there yeah. Go, still there. So you can make both of those with it. If you wanted to have two of the same, I'm presuming you could make two of the same. Absolutely. If you don't want to make the other ones. Yes, well, yes, yes, of course. Two yeah, matching ones for your sofa or whatever. Yeah. So there's only nine of those left. Lots in baskets. Brands banking new today. What's in that cup, cup there, Anna? What, what did your drink did you have in your cup there? Coffee, love. Coffee. Is that coffee? And of course. Green, and what's the green stuff? Oh, it's some... Some plants. Some, some weed. Plants. <laughs> Some oh, wheat from being creative and artistic. <laughs> yeah. I'm being artsy. Yeah. Look at me, I'm so artsy. Okay, so that's your hamster. Nine of those left. Please be careful. Check out your baskets. And last but not least, we've got the Piccadilly. We should make you can make one cushion and a baby cushion with this one. Yeah, you can make a little cat cushion. 1999. Uh, this is called Squirrel. That one was called Stoat, and this one's called Squirrel. Right, now there are 20 of those left, but there's an awful lot of those in baskets, but we only just did that demonstration. I think now we're finished. Well, we, uh, more people will check out now. Very good if you're a beginner. That's the best one yeah. to get if you're a beginner, that it one. It is a good one for beginners. Brilliant, fantastic. Now, Yarn Lane is back on Monday. Oh, Rebecca Reed's back on Monday. And we've got, um, I nearly said Angela Rippon then. She hasn't got Angela Rippon at all. We've got Wendy Orlando. <laughs> got block of the month which is always a really really busy week um i am back on sewing street tomorrow morning at eight o'clock remember it's clearance no guests tomorrow just five hours of clearance tomorrow it's all fabric and you are going to love it oh i'm back on yarn lane on wednesday oh here we go i'm back on yarn lane on wednesday what have i got on wednesday oh of course of course because sam speedo she's making me the top that she's doing it's on facebook she's making one for me to wear I know, oh, I know. How nice. Be lovely, be lovely. Uh, and um, Anna's going to leave all those cushions for me to take home to put in my house. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank it's you so much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Your energy is incredible. Oh, it's thanks. fantastic. Right, thank you very much for joining us. We will see you, well, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Uh, or Yarn Lane will see you on Monday at 12. Take care. Bye-bye.